What's up guys? John, Leslie's over dummies. <clears throat> so I get a lot of questions about uh, building these markers with uh, external tanks or dual CO2 uh, setups or even just a single CO2 setup. And a lot of the questions are, give me the part numbers or the parts list and, and what have you. And, and, and I do like to help you guys the most I can. But I thought I'd make a video to kind of show you the thought process that goes into this and why it's not just cut and dry. There, there's a lot of variables based on what shows up at your door and to try and call out parts. Um, and then I don't want to feel like I'm responsible for sending you in the wrong direction. Uh, so I thought it'd just be easier to kind of tell you what I go through when I am building something sort of like this. First things first is the look you're going for, obviously. So uh, in this case, I wanted it to keep it all nice and compact. Uh, I wanted to have the tank, we're gonna call it a tank for all intents and purposes, uh, mounted within the marker itself. Uh, next decision is, do you want it on a horizontal plane with the marker? Do you want it on an offset? Plane, so down the side, or down this side. Um, based on those uh, decisions, that will decide what kind of mount you're gonna use. So in this case, I went with the, along the plane of the marker. Um, these are one, sorry, these are 30 millimeter scope mounts that have a little rubber insert to size them down to one inch, which is the size of this particular tube. So that would be your next sort of question to ask yourself. Are you putting a tank on here or are you putting one of these CO2 tubes? The neck of a tank, sort of like, so an on off like this, the OD outside diameter is an inch in most cases and variations do occur. And until you have your on off or you've decided on how, which on off you're going to use, it's gonna change what type of mount you purchase. So in this case, 30 millimeter scope mount with, uh, has these rubber reducer rings down to one inch. And I wanted to put it on the plane of the marker, but I want to still have a room for a red dot. So I looked for one that had a, um, a Picatinny mount on top. Now, if you wanted to mount it on the side, so on the left or the right, so offset, things to take into consideration. And I'm gonna be more specific with this particular build in that, so you to function this CO2 tube, you have to turn it to engage it. I'm right-handed. So up top or on this side is the best location. I could put it on this side. I think, you know, in terms of firearm safety, this might not be so good. So that's the reason why I chose this side. But then of course, there's all these other things to take into consideration now. If you put it on the side, and you're using a folding stock like this, you run into clearance problems. So looking down the marker, if you saw my original video, this uh, folding stock was actually on this side, which is the correct side for me, makes it very easy to flick it out. Now here I'm already struggling with two hands to lock this stock back. This is not ideal for me. But I had to go on this side, at least for the short term, because it allowed me to flip the stock open with this hose, this braided hose here, present. And, it, and I'm not done yet. I mean, I, I don't like this. It, it, it works really well on this side, but I can, I'm really, really struggling to, to use this in an intuitive manner. So I'm going to need to move this stock back to this side, but then, and that presents a problem here 
with this hose. Now I could offset it to the side, which I kind of already said I I wanted to just keep it up top. I, I like this, keeps everything, like keeps my OCD happy. Once you've kind of gone through all those little, all those little nitpicks of, of where your stock's gonna be and, and and, and the other thing to take into consideration here too is the height of these. So these are low rise uh, scope mounts. Yeah, you could go to a medium rise, a high rise, you have extra high rises. You can run risers with scope rings or scope rings that have, that the height is actually adjustable and I have a set and they're kind of, they're really cool. Um, you know, so you could almost make this into a grab handle. You, I mean, you could raise these up and be using this as a carry handle if you wanted to. Um, it's all in, in what you want to your marker to look like. Then of course comes the air. So braided hoses come in various lengths. MCS, Modern Combat Sports, has the largest selection that I have found of braided hoses in various lengths. Uh, and some even with black nylon sheathing on the outside, which really cleans up the look of everything. These can vary. There's no way to call out, you know, if, if I were to give you a specific length of hose, if you just moved your scope rings down one more, it's wrong. Technically it's wrong. You could move your scope rings back, but maybe that's not the look or the feel that you're going for. Um, and in choosing your air, your connection method from your air source, um, you have to take into account uh, serviceability of the marker. So in this case, I've installed a nipple here with a quick connect. What this allows is that I can completely separate these things relatively quickly um, without having to unscrew, unthread, break any of these air seals, essentially, is, is why I've done this. Now, that comes with its own set of problems too. As you saw in my last video, I had too much tension on this particular fitting, which caused a leak. Adding additional connection points, you know, opens the door for more locations of possible leaks, failures. Um, and failures at an inopportune time pose a problem, obviously. So minimizing the amount of connections is always good. And I'll give you an example here. So you saw this leak in my last video. I went to a longer hose. There's no tension on this now. It's not going to leak. Well, I'm pretty sure it's not going to leak. I actually haven't tested this yet. You guys are gonna see that at the end of this video. So once you've figured out your air connection, probably one of the Bigger questions that I get asked. I mean, I think most of you get the idea that this stuff, you know, can change a lot. Um, but it's the connection to your bottle or your ASA thread. Um, this is an adapter that I got from AliExpress. It's for a Condor PCP air rifle. Um, I will put the link in this video. It comes assembled with a, a quick connect like this. Um, but once you unthread it, you can thread in pretty much anything you want. I could thread this hose directly in there. Um, and I may just do that because something with the TIPX is, well, to do a full assembly, again, something you just need to kind of look forward in your steps. And, and they don't all come at once. I mean, you're gonna stumble a little bit, trust me. Um, to disassemble a TIPX properly, if you have a remote air setup, is you have to unthread this. So essentially, this that end is kind of become my quick my quick disconnect. Um, this and a TIPX should never be tightened down with a wrench. There is a tiny little O-ring on the end. It does the sealing for you guys. Just plug it in. And that's it. Hand tight. That has never leaked. That's as tight as I've ever put put this 
that particular uh, remote air fitting. Guys, hopefully that short walkthrough of kind of the process that I go through when I'm putting something like this together um, helps you. And uh, let's go see if this one doesn't leak. At the same time though, it's going to change. It is going to change. This folding stock, it has to go back on this side. So I'm gonna have to make a concession somewhere. You'll just have to watch out uh, for updated videos as they kind of roll through. I had time to actually pre-edit the tabletop video and I thought I'd mention some important things that I may have left out. The scope rings. I almost buy exclusively from Amazon. Amazon Prime is um, a very good way for trial and error and not costing you a lot of money. Obviously, um, if they don't work out, very easy returns. Uh, not, not endorsing Amazon, not sponsored by Amazon anyway, but there are some things that they do that make things that we do really convenient. And one of them is trial and error. Um, Obviously, if you were going to mount a tank, low-rise scope rings are not going to work. You're going to need at least a medium-rise um, to space your tank off. There are some other uh, places like uh, Critical Situations and uh, Wix and Shop that print actual tank mounts that hold onto your tank and not onto the ASA like how I normally set mine up. The other thing is this adapter. I will put the link in this, but as it turns out, I haven't used this adapter in a very long time. Um, the adapters that I normally use that you saw in my older builds um, were actually from a company called Palmer's Pursuit Paintball. Uh, my understanding is they are closing up shop. They are not taking any new inventory, so whatever they have, it's just marked as sold out now. And uh, they had some very high quality versions of these, not made in China, it was made in the USA. Um, long story short, the thread in this uh, adapter is, I believe, M10 straight, so, uh, <clears throat> which accepts 1.8 NPT thread. Uh, not correct, but when you put enough uh, Teflon tape on it, it will seal, which is what my leak actually was. Um, it turned out I didn't put enough Teflon tape on. I misidentified the thread and that's how I ended up in the first video. So I did actually retape it, put it in and it held air, but I had only put one uh, 12 gram in so you guys are going to see the, the dual 12 gram. I just went and reinstalled the original fitting that came, the, the original nipple that came on this uh, particular fitting. And, uh, well, we're going to find out if it worked. And I'm sure it's going to. It has a different kind of seal. It has a sealing washer here with, a, with an O-ring. And I think that's about it. Uh, let's just fire it up. Um, for those of you that don't or haven't seen the dual 12 gram, neck first for the first CO2, neck up for the second. You thread your cap on completely. Make sure it's tight. And then this is your piercing knob. So I like to turn this all the way down till it's uh, just tightened up a little bit. That way it's ready to pierce. So it should just be, well, and that's, the, and that's the problem with this is it's more like a couple of turns to pierce both. If you just do one full turn, you're probably only gonna pierce one CO2. And we always want both working. And here we go. Safety on. Oh, 
Oh, so that was like more like three turns. I, I actually heard the second CO2 pierce there. And that's why I kind of, I would love to see a, a push to pierce on this. That would make it way more handy. Jules, I'm not gonna chrono them. I got 13 in this guy. And I got one, two, I got seven in this guy. So I have 20 shots total here. Ah, I really want to chrono it. This has, I've reinstalled, this is unbypassed now, but it is a max rig. Three hundred and forty. That's not too shabby, huh? Let's try it with the bud stock and you'll see how kind of wobbly it is. I don't know why. It's so hard. Like I really I literally need two hands to get this butter. You need to be left-handed for that. That's why it's gotta move. That was 20. That wasn't too bad. 12 more. Well, actually that was 22 because of the two blanks. That one was pretty weak. We're gonna call that, well, let's just keep looking. <laughs> I don't mean you can see how slow those are going. Well, it did fire all 12. But they're comical to say the least on the last few, but that's it. It's all she wrote, folks. Gonna make some changes. And something else I should have mentioned, but it's the perfect opportunity. So in this case, I could degas with this Quick disconnect. Obviously, if this was full of CO2, it'd be blasting me in the face, but it makes for very easy cleanup. See you next time.